When you say you're gonna do something, do it. Boom! Chesh Luja! What's up, people? Hola, Vigos that here. Welcome to another episode. I see all these YouTubers making videos about what not to do in Poland. Don't make these mistakes in Poland. I'm actually happy that they're making those videos because at the end of the day, what we want is to showcase Poland and to make sure that more people out there can see the beautiful country that Poland is and the great people the Polish people are. But when I think about the things that you should not do in Poland, I think we need to go deeper. So come with me and let's see what are the real things that you should not do in Poland. If there's one thing that you're going to avoid doing on this list, this is the one. Don't refuse a babcha's offering. Polish people are very well known for their hospitality. They are incredible hosts. They're welcoming and they love to share their things with people, especially things that have been crafted and a lot of time has been put into it. Food is a very big one and this traces back to the times of war. Of course, all this has been extremely well documented, but if you didn't know, back during war times, it would be weeks before people would have any option whatsoever at the grocery store. Unlike today, you were not choosing between a bread with seven seeds baked in a Mediterranean stone oven or the gluten-free loaf designed in America but assembled in Vietnam only sold in Martin Spencer's to the first 100 people. And even with this scarcity, Polish people were splitting in half whatever little they had to share with whoever might need it. A great example of this is during Polish Vigilia, there's always an extra space at the table for an unexpected visitor that might need some shelter. It is a generation thing. Polish grandmas, although a little old and maybe a little tired, will always find strength and time to show love. And usually they do that by giving you things, especially food. You don't eat fish? Nievashne. Or you're on a diet? Nievashne. You're vegan. You're vegan? Shit, that's a lot of butter. Nievashne. Don't worry about being nice. Be consistent, be reliable. Depending where you're traveling to and where you're from, this may vary, but it's quite a general rule that whenever you go to a place, it pays off to be polite, to be cheerful, to be nice. It's not that Polish people don't like it when you're nice, but that concept is a little bit different when you're in Poland. I myself, I'm very guilty of that. I can smile all day long and I can compliment people left and right, but I'm still gonna get long faces and awkward stares if I don't comply with the single most important rule in a relationship with a Polish person, and that is to be consistent and to be reliable. If you say you're gonna do something, do it. If you said you're gonna be there at three, don't show up at four. And if you committed to helping a friend, but you were just trying to be nice, don't do it or you lose all respect of Polish people. Honestly speaking, some of the things they say to you can come off as pretty damn rude. If you don't know the reason why they do it, then you might feel a little bit like, hey Kuba, can you help me put together furniture this weekend? Nope, I don't have time. Cold. But you see, it's not that they're really rude, it's that they don't want to commit to something that they might not keep their word on. They really don't want to come off as unreliable. Same thing goes with consistency. If you say you don't like something, don't be changing your mind because people will take your word for it. Stop all that fairy tale bullshit and let's complain together. If there's one thing that Polish people love more than vodka and pierogi babci is to complain. But here's the thing, there's an art form to complaining in Poland. There are certain rules that you have to adhere to. There's nothing more irritating to a Pole than someone that comes off as overly happy and just overall fake. Your friend had a terrible day at job, we're in the middle of the pandemic, their son is sick. The last thing you should say to them is Benji dobrze, jutro jest nowy dzień. Oh, don't even try. Instead, share how you also had a shitty day and he will feel understood. Polish people value community. So they rejoice on the feeling that they belong to a bigger picture. So the infamous Polish complaining, it's nothing more than them looking for a connection with others. So next time you hear someone grumble, show some camaraderie and let them know how you're also going through something similar. As counterproductive as this might sound, I promise you, in the end, they will give you a big smile. If you want to go to the next level with Polish people, don't just go for the words, go for the body language. 
It is true that Polish language is one of the hardest languages to learn. So when a foreigner learns a couple of words, you'll get a few surprise faces and even a couple paddings in the back. Although, let's face it, Polish people don't touch so much. And having said that, we're in the year 2020. We are in the times of millennials, of Gen Z, and you get more and more YouTube videos showcasing Poland, the wonders that you can find in this beautiful country. Which means it's not uncommon to find some foreigner learning to say do widzenia or dziękuję. But for the life of me, learn that it's not pierogis, it's pierogi. It's already in plural form. There are some serious, unique body language cues that if you master them, Polish people will hand you the keys to the city. Number one, the Polish shoulder shrug. Nie wiem. Tak, tak, tak. Number two, the circle of trust. Polish people have what I called a circle of trust. It's an imaginary ring that goes all the way around them where they feel uncomfortable whatever is close to this imaginary ring. Let's say this is a person. If that person comes inside my ring, that is a no-no. And number three, voice volume and polite interruption. For me to explain voice volume and polite interruption, I'm gonna need Carolina's help. Okay guys, so like I said, I need her help to clarify this particular Polish body language trait. We're talking about volume of voice and what I call polite interruption, okay? Mm -hmm. So for example, Polish people speak loud. Not as Dominican, we yell. But <laughs> you guys are, for example, in a, in a public transportation oh, yes. and you're there on the phone. Hello, <laughs> mama, coś mnie? Yeah. Exactly. Why does that happen? Why does it happen when they're yeah. loud? Well, I don't think anyone has the answer to this question. Okay, so for example, if a foreigner that is going to start incorporating some of that Polishness, what should I do? Like, for example, to me it's very hard to speak when people are listening to me, so I'm like, I'll call you later. I think it's more important that in a group that you learn to deal with the interruption. interruption. That takes us to the second part, which is Polite interruption. Polish people interrupt I love how you called it polite. each other. I call it polite because they don't mean, you yeah. know, you guys don't mean to interrupt people mm. as in like rule, like shut up. It's yeah. more like we are speaking in a group of people here and all of a sudden... It's so interjections, much just, right? Yeah, interjection. Mm. So... Like what I'm doing now to you. <laughs> there you go. So learn that one. The final thing is, Think like a Pole, not like a tourist. It's so common to hear tourists say, Poland is so cheap, everything is so affordable, the food is delicious. What an amazing nature. And all of that is true. But Polish people know this, and this is my particular opinion. And they're not gonna say anything because they are very humble people, but there's a lot more to being Polish. There's a lot more to Poland. And frankly, there's a lot more things that probably you should not do in Poland than what I can cover in one video. But if you wanna get closer to the beautiful group of human beings that Polish people are, I think it's important that you start thinking like a Pole. When you go over to visit, get off the beaten path, explore the villages, talk to the local people. They love meeting foreigners. Because at the end of the day, long gone are the days where societies remain closed. Polish people want to explore the world. Polish people want the world to explore them. So come on over and enjoy the pleasures of Poland. Boom! That's all guys, that's the end of the episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm gonna ask you to share this with a friend. Doesn't matter if it's Polish, doesn't matter where they're from. And uh, to be honest with you, if you're a Pole, cut me a break, man. I'm one of you. <laughs>